Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days for today's uh, fourth video. So day 10 is going to take us to around the 9th of August. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles and maybe run around a couple of weeks. And we're going to have a look at CFS Speed 2 for August at the end of the video. So very much an August look ahead uh, today. Um, just say, but first we really say was our 6am forecast. We also released uh, uh, GMA Friday as well as the ECM to you 42 it's been a very busy day down as well as today. You know, the focus very much on, on, on August and on the next month or so. So loads of content for you to get your teeth into. Do have a look. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We're going to begin this one uh, with Storm Evert. Evert, I think it is. Um... I hope that's right. So, uh, this is how things are looking anyway with this uh, storm. Uh, and you see there's a lot of heavy rain associated with it, actually, across England and Wales. Anyway, not all that much, really, for Scotland and Northern Ireland. A few showery bursts here and there, but generally the northern half of the country is a little bit drier. But from Northern England south, there's loads of rain. got this main rain band just here, like through the northwest of Wales into far north of England. They come down south of that, much more broken with the precipitation, but also very intense. Look at these bright colours here showing up through the Midlands, for example. Tarantula rain there, uh, going up through, uh, through the West Midlands and extending up towards the Birmingham area now uh, as well. So let's just read fresh page, have a little look. Uh, so yeah, really intense, uh, really intense sort of thunder and uh, or fungy rain going on. I don't know if it's actually lightning mode with that. If we put on the lightning uh, display, you can see there isn't any lightning at the moment. Um, but certainly the intensity is suggesting like fungy rain. I suppose as the afternoon wears on, we might start seeing some of that generating lightning and uh, thunder. That's generally pushing uh, sort of westwards as well. I think you just have a look at me sort of... Um, the circulation with that, uh, you can see that that's generally pushing uh, uh, sort of uh, eastwards, I should say, across uh, the country northwards and eastwards. So there's going to be a lot of rain around uh, through this afternoon. It's going to become more broken, but these showers could well give thunderstorms. There is a weather warning for thunderstorms across uh, central and eastern areas this afternoon. Trench rain, flash flooding, and uh, so on. It's also very windy uh, last night in the southwest. I think the worst of winds are beginning to uh, moderate now. But, uh, but yeah, it's been a wild old time. These are our latest temperature observations and uh, they're looking quite cool as well this is from XC weather so you can see we're only uh, up to like 20 degrees at Hull Beach and also 20 degrees at Bournemouth but otherwise temperatures are actually below 20 degrees at midday like Luton is only 16 uh, well as Bourne is just 15 degrees these are atrocious temperatures for the end of July 16 degrees at uh, East Midlands Airport, Liverpool just 15, Senny Bridge at 15 down in South West, Cardingham at 14 degrees, and just mid teens like in Northern England, Walk Up as well, uh, Reddersdale Camp just 15 degrees, a little bit warmer at Tramalbin and Strathallan, but not saying much, only 16 or 17 degrees, Tullet Bridge at 15, and uh, Belfast at 16. So the temperatures generally are pegged back. Into like the uh, into like the uh, mid teens. So you've got five degrees there. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. I think that something's gone wrong with that station just there. Uh, that's too low. I would have thought uh, compared to surrounding areas. But yeah, it's very very cool. Uh, afternoon out there. Temperatures only mid to up to Celsius. One or two places struggling into the 20s, but these temperatures are pretty poor uh, for, for this time of the year. Late July, of course, is one of the hottest periods of the year. Late July, early August. Uh, but to show you the storm name uh, list, remember 1st of September last year, we had the storm name, li storm name list for 2020-2021. This is how far we've got into it. So we, we got Adam, Bella, Christoph, Darcy and now Everett uh, under our belts. We've got uh, all of these still to come though and the new list will be revealed on the first day of September, I think. Now Gavin is still hanging there. Uh, I'm still hanging in there by my fingertips. Uh, so, so we've just got through E, Everett, uh, we've got Fleur to go, uh, next, and then after that we get Gavin. So, I don't think we're going to get Storm Gavin before the list is, <laughs> is changed, um, on the 1st of September and we get a new list of names. But I am just about, hang on, we're just about hanging in there. But uh, for dear life, we've got another month to go. We have a very stormy 
uh, you know, very stormy August, then it's possible we could get uh, Gavin in. But I think we're going to run out. We might get Fleur, though, because I think there could be a name storm sort of late next week, actually. Um, it's a possibility. Uh, so we might get Fleur, but I don't. I think it's unlikely we'll get, like, because we've already had one, of course, ever uh, today. So I, I think it's unlikely we'll get three before the end of August. But you never know. You know, I'm hanging in there for, for dear life by my finger. Text, but I think uh, I don't think we're going to get Storm Gavin, but we shall see, and uh, we'll see how it how it plays out. Uh, Central temperature has come down by 0.1 of a degree, so uh, we're at 18.5 now. That's 2.4 degrees above average as provisional to yesterday, but 29. But it's going to drop, of course, again after today, go down to 18.4. Again, we're going to get a big down scratch, I think, so I, I reckon we're going to finish up around 17.7. That was like the projection, but we've got to wait and see. Uh, we'll know on Sunday. These are a GFS up rare temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, we at Cambridge again today. So, red line is the 30 year other air temperature average for Cambridge. We're below average, of course, at the moment with those upper air temperatures and surface temperatures too. I'm going to say generally cool uh, for the next week to 10 days. Right into the acceleration to the middle part of August. Again, we see hints, possibilities, uh, you know, maybes that we might get a warm up. It's a long way off, and it's uncertain. It's like two weeks away, but there is a possibility, and we discussed this in JMA Friday, but we might get a much warmer, maybe a hotter, second half to uh, August compared to first half to August. But definitely the first half of August is going to be pretty, pretty cool. And also unsettled, regular precipitation spikes can through from start to finish. There's no change with the ensemble graph today. Temperature anomalies from the 30th of July to the 7th of August below average. Precipitation anomalies from the 30th of July to 7th of August. A bit wetter than average, particularly for England and Wales. Scotland doing okay, though. Quite dry there. Latest wind flow map from EarthNorthSchool.net looks quite dramatic. You can see, you know, you can see where that storm is currently centred right through central parts of England. The strongest winds on the southern side of the area of low pressure transferring from southwest to south east. It's certainly pretty blowy for anybody uh, down on the south coast today. Much lighter winds, so, uh further north. Right, let's start going through some modern data then. So, uh, for this section of video, I should put webcam back on. Hello, I've returned. Right, let's go through UK Met first of all. Then, this is how UK Met is looking for midday tomorrow. Monday is 2nd of... Uh, uh, no, I'm not talking about midday tomorrow. It's, out, it's looking for midday on Monday. Uh, in a northwesterly wind with some showery conditions in northern and eastern areas too. We go through to uh, Tuesday... Again, it looks like we're in a bit of a transient sort of ridge there, so it should be a reasonable amount of dry weather, I think, through the overall next week. We're probably not completely settled. Uh, then in the middle of next week, a deepening area of low pressure begins to move in. This is the possibility of that named storm I was talking about. Um, you know, uh, second half next week, that might be Fleur, although the ice bars do open out very quickly by the time we get through to midnight on Friday, which is as far as we go, the UK met. But it's one to watch, you know, uh, that might whip itself up into into a significant development. And if it does, that might be Storm Fleur um, late next week. But we shall see. But anyway, it looks quite unsettled with that low pressure bringing bouts of rain in from around the middle of next week onwards to the end of next week. That's as far as we get to with the uh, with the UK Met, where I'm touch just there. So we'll have a look at the uh, midnight GFS next. So this is how GFS looks for Monday. Uh, again, rather showery in a sort of northwesterly type flow. Try to build up a little bit of a transient bump there on uh, Tuesday, but it doesn't really come to anything. That's really flattened off. And second half next week, low pressure starts moving in from off the Atlantic. This is quite a deep, this is a deepening area of low pressure, quite a significant low that develops through the second half next week will bring bouts of rain and cool northwesterly winds with it uh, as well. Stays unsettled into next week came too with further showery conditions uh, very likely. And then moving up towards day 10 we just start to open up the ice bars a little bit, start to get a little bit of a ridge uh, building from the southwest. It begins to settle down a little bit and warm up slightly in the south. And in more extreme range actually we build this ridge through these west and southwestern areas turning things mainly dry and pretty warm, you would have thought, possibly even 
um, you know, very warm down in the south under that ridge from the Azores, but the north still looks a little bit unsettled, to be honest. In my acceleration, the Azores side gives it a really good go to build in and, and turn us drier and hotter as we move up towards the middle of uh, August. The upper air temperatures have lifted up quite significantly. They're not hot, but they have lifted up to like warm to very warm category. But very quickly, that ridge attempt is flattened off by this really deep area of low pressure uh, just here that starts moving in right at the very end of the GFS midnight run on the 15th of August. That could be a name storm <laughs> if that came up because that's over uh, two weeks uh, away. But look at the upper air temperatures with this. So in the South Beach, the upper air temperatures are that low are actually quite hot, and I suppose that's what's fueling the low and turning it into such a significant development. So that'd be one of those bizarre situations where it's hot in the South Beach, probably around 30 degrees in the northwest. You've got severe gales and uh, and heavy rain uh, with that. So so um, you know that's uh, that's quite a bizarre one as we finish the GFS midnight run. Let's have a look at six Zeb. It's the very latest then. Uh, so again, rather showery on Monday and a little bit on the cool side as well. It's generally rather showery through the O-Pub next week, actually, with these troughs coming in from off the Atlantic. And then actually gets more unsettled into the end of next week and into next weekend. This is Saturday, 7th of August. We've quite a deep area of low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic. up bring spells of rain. Quite strong winds too. Up to day 10, looking quite unsettled, especially so for more northern and western areas. However, by day 10, the Azores High is beginning to ridge to our south across parts of France. So uh, we're going to extend range with the GFS 6 then, and we get this very, very deep area of low pressure developing to the northwest of Scotland. <coughs> Excuse me again, that is the kind of thing that might get named, uh, you know, so that could be a name uh, storm. But again, down in the south, we're building up this ridge from the Azores, becoming hot, oh, hotter, anyway, and dry in the south, but storming in the north and the northwest. That's the upper air temperatures. Looking very warm there on the 11th of August. Now, at the end of this GFS 6 head run, it really starts going to town with hot weather. So uh, we begin to strengthen the Azores high and move the ridge to our east. With low pressure developing around Biscay, we start to pull up this very hot southerly to southeasterly wind. Look at the upper air temperatures there on Friday the 13th of August. So we turn hot across England and Wales. All parts are very warm, but turn hot across England and Wales. We have got plus 20 Celsius isotherm beginning to move into northern parts of France. We haven't seen much of a plus 20 Celsius isotherm uh, so far this summer. But there it is across northern France on the 13th of August. And by the 14th of August, Saturday the 14th, that does actually get up into the country. Although it is turning increasingly thundering with this trough moving in from the west. So look at me, it says that plus 20 cells ice firm. I'll highlight it for you. There it is, plus 20 cells ice firm is into the south for the first time uh, this summer. You know we get quite excited about plus 20 cells ice firm because that can lift us up into the upper 30 Celsius, around 100 Fahrenheit, uh, you know, in the middle of summer. It's a very long way off. It's two weeks away uh, and it's unlikely to verify. But the 6Z is really ramping up heat potential in the middle of August there. By the end of BGFS 6Z, which gets to the 15th of August, we've moved the hottest of that, those temperatures away and we're pulling in something cooler and fresher from the northwest. So it's still very warm in the south east, but you see these cooler, fresher uh, uh, temperatures are moving in from uh, from from uh, from the North Atlantic in on that northwesterly wind. So interesting. GFS going for a, uh, GFS six then I should say going for a very significant heat wave uh, for the middle of August. Uh, right, yourself, Junior. So, if you enjoyed the video, then please can you smash your like button to make sure you sub to the channel. Just thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know uh, what you think. Yourself, GM is looking again under the ridge of high pressure. We're trying to get under the ridge of high pressure on uh, Monday, but to be honest, it all looks rather showering for the early to middle part of next week. And then this quite significant area of low pressure comes in through the second half of next week, and that will bring spells of heavy rain and quite strong winds uh, with it too. It looks really unsettled as we move up towards day ten and a trough of low pressure. By day temperature for night for August, that trough is beginning to ease away to our east. It looks like we're trying to raise the heights a little bit, but you certainly wouldn't want to be predicting like a heat wave from that chart, uh, to be honest. Where that goes beyond that, you know, it, it could go in several directions. Um, and then the ECM looks like this. So uh, on Monday, uh, we're looking rather showery, especially the more northern and eastern areas. We keep it pretty showery through most of next week, this deepening area of low pressure 
just here to our southwest. Could bring some really quite wet weather to more southern areas in the second half of uh, next week. And then another quite significant area of low pressure comes in next weekend. Brings a further bout of wind and uh, rain uh, with it. And up to day 10, we just look rather cool, showery on those uh, west to northwesterly winds. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM uh, midnight run from Tometro.com. So, of course, today we've got lots of heavy rain focused on England and Wales. We'll have loads of showers coming up over the weekend as well. Saturday is probably the sh most showery of two days. Sunday won't have quite as many showers. I'm meaning to the Opal next week again. The showers begin to ease down a little bit, but they will still be around for the Opal next week before things turn more unsettled again for the second half next week with regular bouts of rain and wind coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Right at that point, turn off webcam and have a look at options on the table within the ECM Ensemble. So these are them. Uh, so these are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10. Gets us to the 9th of August via the Icelandic Met Office. 23 members of the ECM Ensembles have low pressure over the country and to our west. We're looking unsettled uh, and, uh, you know, wet and windy and, and whatnot without inclusive control and the operation run. 15, again, with low pressure over the country to the west. That's very unsettled too. 13, just a little bit more high pressure towards Iceland, but lots of low pressure over to the south of the country. All options really are looking unsettled at day 10. Two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. This is going to the 14th of August. We have 18 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to our north, northeast, low pressure to our west. So that's turning a little bit drier, perhaps. Sending that trough out into the centre of the Atlantic. I'm probably warming things up a little bit as well. I think that could be starting to pull wind in from more of an easterly direction. 16 still quite unsettled with low pressure to a north. Bit of high pressure over France, but that's generally going to be. Uh, rather Atlantic driven. Six have a large ridge over to the west of the country and going north. That's going to be mainly dry. Uh, probably not overly warm with that, but it will be warmer than it is at the beginning of August anyway. Another six down here showing high pressure from the Azores into UK and Western Europe. That's turning drier and much warmer. And five with high pressure sort of centred somewhere over top of the country again. That could be mostly dry and quite warm. So by the middle of August, perhaps increasing signs than the ECM ensembles as well today of high pressure coming back. That does not necessarily mean it will be a hint way because it depends on the exact position of the high pressure. So pulling up the extreme sort of heat that we saw for the 14th of August with the GFS 6Z, uh, for example, you know, is a, is a big ask to do that to get the, get the exact position of the ridge correct. Um, but definitely it looks like the ECM ourselves are on the move towards higher pressure for the middle of August. But before we get too carried away with all of this, let's just have a look at the CFS V2 finally for August. This is the 700 millibar high tsunami today from the CFS. This will bring everyone down, back down to earth, I think, because this shows for August a deep chopper below average heights, low pressure centred over UK and Northern Europe as well. High pressure, the Azores high has pulled well away from us into the middle of the Atlantic. We send a jet stream, a wind flow on a northwest southeast alignment. Just sort of cool and unsettled, really. Uh, for, for August with that. It's very, very, very different pattern compared to what we've had in uh, June and July. And, uh, and yeah, that is going to be an unsettled, cool, and potentially quite wet August. The temperature anomaly for August is actually below average today. Uh, cool month coming up through most parts of Europe uh, as well. So it's a rather chilly August forecast there. And the precipitation only doesn't show any particular signal. But obviously, with a deep trough centred right over top of the country, a deep trough of low right over the country and northern Europe, you'd expect uh, a very unsettled month of it if uh, if that came off so it's all speculation uh definitely the next week's 10 days the first week 10 days of august are going to be unsettled as we've been saying in the videos over the past sort of several days um going to be unsettled for the first week 10 days of august definitely and quite cool there are increasing signs but the middle of august might uh bring some hotter and drier weather, whether we go to the sort of extreme heat that the GFS 6 Z was showing, uh, you know, uh, remains to be seen. But right a few signs that high pressure could come back middle of August, turn us drier and uh, warmer. So August might not be a complete write-off, despite what the CFS is uh, suggesting. But uh, again, it's all speculation. And we'll have to wait and see how it all plans out. Of course, we're going to keep you updated about all of this at Gauss over the next few days. Uh, right, so uh, check out Jeremy Friday and the ECM 42-day forecast if you'd like to do that, as well as the uh, 6am upload tomorrow. 
No live stream tonight, by the way, because I've got to do the seasonal model roundup for uh, for the autumn. The second seasonal model roundup uh, will be recorded tonight, so I won't have time to live stream um, tonight. So tomorrow we will start with a 7am forecast. Then we'll have that to second autumn 2021 seasonal model roundup uh, as a second video up tomorrow. We'll have a weekend forecast as well, and also a 10 to 40 day. So another four videos to come for you tomorrow. going to be another epic day at Gazworth. Well, this. You enjoy the rest of your Friday, and for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.